In the first algebra video, we're going to look at the simplest way to solve certain kinds of algebra problems, and usually they're going to be easier questions in the section. You're going to see most of these, if not all of them, are number ones, number twos, so the easier ones. So the first way to solve algebra problems is just to solve it as an equation, right? Something you do in math class all the time. Let's look at an example. If x squared minus 36 equals zero, which of the following could be a value of x? All right, so we want to find out what can x be here, so let's just go ahead and solve this like an algebra equation. So add 36 to both sides, we get x squared equals 36. Square root both sides, we get x is equal to plus or minus six. So either positive six or negative six would work here. And notice we do have negative six, so that is the answer. And, and notice as well, you can check this by putting negative six in. Negative six squared is 36, and 36 minus 36 is zero. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. It's number one, an easy one, you just solve it. Another thing you could have done is when they're asking you for the value of x and you've got multiple choice answers, just plug in the answers, right? Plug in A, plug in B, plug in C. See which one works when you find one that works, as does A. You know that's the answer, so you pick it and move on. Let's look at another example that is a bit harder, still number one, still an easy question, but a little bit different than the last one. Because notice we have if 4 times t plus u plus 3 equals 19, then t plus u equals. So you might see this and say, well, I've got two variables, how do I get what t equals and how do I get what u equals? One of the things you're going to see is we don't really care, right? We just want to know what the sum is and you notice that that is the same sum that's represented here. So we can imagine that this is just our x variable and we want to know what x is. So again, you could in theory plug these in for t plus u and see which one would work or we can just solve it. So let's go ahead and do that. So 4 times t plus u plus 3 is 19. So subtract 3 from both sides, we get 4 times t plus u equals 16. Divide both sides by 4, we're left with t plus u equals 4. So there you go, t plus u equals 4. We don't have to actually solve for t or for u individually. We just solve for t plus u. Let's look at another one, again, a number 1. If 1 third y plus 9 is 0, then y equals. Okay, again, we could plug in, but let's just solve. Why not? 1 third of y plus 9 is 0. So subtract 9 from both sides, we get 1 third y equals negative 9 times both sides by 3, and we're going to get y equals negative 27, which is choice A, which is the answer. So you can see these are all number ones, all pretty straightforward and easy. How about this one? Uh, if 10 plus x is 5 more than 10, what is the value of 2x? Notice there's a bit of a wrinkle here because they don't actually give us an equation and they want to know what 2x equals, so don't solve for x and then give them x. They want 2x. So this is an example of where circling the what they want is useful because we don't want to make the mistake of giving them something they don't want. So let's go ahead and translate this into equation. Now we're going to actually have a whole video on translating words into equations, but this one's not that bad. So I just included it here. Uh, 10 plus X is so 10 plus X is in other words, it's equal to remember wherever you see is just put an equal sign five more than 10. Well, five more than 10 is just 15. So this is a pretty easy one. Subtract 10 from both sides. We get x is 5. Now don't go ahead and pick 5 because that's not what they want. They want 2x. 2 times x or 2 times 5 is 10. So this one is choice C. If x minus 2 squared equals 49, then x could be. Okay, this one's a bit trickier because notice we've got this kind of squared uh, situation going on here in the parentheses. So you could plug in and that's fine. Let's just go ahead and solve it to see what that would look like. So x minus 2 squared is 49. So we go ahead, square root both sides. We get x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 7. And so we're going to have two answers here, right? We could have either x is equal to 9 or x is equal to negative 5. Either one of those would be fine here. Um, so which one matches? Well, it looks like E matches. And that's going to be the answer. And again, we could plug that in. 9 minus 2 is 7. 7 squared is 49. So that, of course, works. Last one, if 2 times m times k is equal to 6, then mk equals. So don't get fooled by the way they write the parentheses here. We can just easily write this as 2mk equals 6. We don't really care the parentheses around here. Uh, it's the associative property. We can just multiply them by anything in any order. So go ahead and divide by 2, and we're going to get mk is equal to 3. And there you go. So it's just choice A. Pretty simple. So overall, for the easier algebra problems, all you really need to do is solve. You can even plug in the answer choices, um, but pretty straightforward from there. If you see weird things they want, like here MK, or over here uh, T plus U, don't freak out. Just look for that in the equation, solve for it, 
and you're good to go.